We are back, everyone. Welcome to Subjectively, the channel where we discuss character design in the context of popular media. My name is Jack, and today's video is sponsored by Boxu. We'll talk more about them in a bit. Not to pat myself on the back, but I honestly think that the Pokémon I'm about to show you are some of my favorites that I've concocted thus far. You'll have to let me know what you think, but I'll tell you now that some of these have been highly requested concepts from fans. At least a few of you watching are going to be very happy with what you see. Well, I hope. As a change of pace for this video, we are going to tackle all new designs. No redesigns, no revisiting older Pokémon and updating them. I know we haven't had a video like that for the Maza region in a while, and to be honest, I wasn't even planning on making another Pokémon video so soon. These were some ideas that struck me rather abruptly and just looked too good in my head to ignore. We're going to start with the highly anticipated regional variant line. Well, to say it's highly anticipated might be exaggerating a bit, but at least a few people have asked for more Mazian forms. No one actually specifically requested that I do a regional variant of Crab Brawler. No, this was entirely my idea. The thing is, I love Crab Brawler. It's actually my favorite fighting type Pokemon, full stop. Now, my favorite thing about regional variants is when they take a design like Raticate, which I think is poorly considered and an uninteresting looking Pokemon, and give it a more contemporary rework while adding a bit of lore. But I didn't choose Crab Brawler as a candidate for a regional variant because I don't like the way it looks. I chose it because of its evolution, Crabominable. As much as I adore Crab Brawler, I despise the evolved form. I think the concept behind the design is solid, taking a real life animal like a Yeti Crab and giving it a fantastical twist by hybridizing its visuals with that of a mythical creature. In fact, saying that out loud makes me feel like Crabominable should be one of my all-time favorite Pokémon. Unfortunately, its mop of blonde hair, buck teeth, and uncomfortable breastplates has me wishing that there was a way I could undo evolutions in Pokémon games. So, with my regional Crab Brawler, not much would change. However, I would be playing up an aspect of the original design to a very unrealistic degree. Crab Brawler, quite clearly, takes most of its visual inspiration from coconut crabs, one of the largest species of decapod out there and the largest living terrestrial invertebrate in the world. That's right, it's a land crab, only spending the first part of its life in water before shifting to a life of sand, grass, and trees. Mozzie and Crab Brawler takes it one step further, abandoning life by the sea altogether in exchange for harsh, dry, desert living. You'd be hard-pressed to find a crab in real life, living out in a true arid desert, but in the Maza region, the sandy dunes are peppered with these little scuttlers. It wouldn't be a fighting type anymore. So my Mazian crab brawler has swapped out its boxing gloves for a pair of long, delicate pincers perfect for sifting through the sand, or fastening a wing nut. I love, of course, the reinterpretation of crab antenna in crab brawler as a pompadour-like hairdo, and I exaggerated that aspect further in my design, making it slightly more... Grease? -y? I bounced back and forth about colors for a bit, eventually changing them after I designed the evolution in order to make both forms feel more like ground types. My original blue color palette looked more like real life land crabs found around the Gulf of Mexico, but it made the typing seem a little too ambiguous. Crab Brawler, Mazian form, the boxer Pokemon. In the Maza region, crab brawlers have adapted to a life in the desert. Miles from water, the Pokémon have lost their fiercely competitive nature that's so characteristic of their Alolan counterpart. Instead, they redirect their energy into crafting shelter out of the dirt and mud. They are often kept in local mechanic shops, as their surprising strength and knack for basic engineering make them ideal assistants. The evolution to my Mazian Crab Brawler would be a shot at redemption for one of my favorite designs. I wasn't even going to make a regional form for Crab Abominable. That's a lost cause. Instead, I'm giving this crab an entirely new evolution, one building off of a rough concept that I introduced in the first form. The contrasting themes in the two Maza region games are traditionalism versus modernism, but a lot of my designs have been based off of very traditional, sometimes even ancient, concepts. This design was an opportunity to make something that leaned more towards the modern side of the spectrum, while still taking inspiration from Latin American and Mexican culture. The ancient Aztec or Maya may not have known a brake light from a stick shift, but muscle cars are a big part of a lot of contemporary Latino culture. Looking at some reference photos of souped-up lowriders, I realized that there are a lot of similarities between these cars and crabs. They both have shells, they support themselves through a series of hydraulic mechanisms, and neither of them enjoy being submerged in boiling water. As crazy as it sounds, I combined a crab and a car, 
to create Crustang, a name generously suggested by a viewer of one of my streams. With legs like the axles of a tricked out lowrider and claws that would help out around the body shop, this is another Maza design that better represents the connection between people and Pokemon, rather than just a Pokemon existing in a realistic ecological environment. Colors took me a minute to figure out. Like I said, I went back and changed some things about Crab Brawler so that they looked more like ground types. And of course, I integrated some blues and grays to hammer home the steel typing in the evolved form. It's a weird design, but I love it so much more than Crabominable, and it might be one of my favorite Maza Pokemon so far. Crustang, the low rider Pokemon. Crustang are rarely found in the wild, as the conditions necessary for a crab roller to evolve in the Maza region are entirely dependent on contact with humans. Lacking a reliable source of sustenance in the desert, Mazian and crab rollers get essential minerals from scrap metal. This excessive intake of iron causes them to evolve into Crustang. With a carapace like the metal chassis of a car, Crustang are the Pokemon of choice for Mazian gearheads. Trainers will customize their Crustangs with body paints and decals, and even enter them in shows to see who has the most striking shell. Their specially adapted claws are powerful enough to crush a car engine, but delicate enough to fasten a screw. I'm sure I'm not alone in my opinions about Crab Brawler and Crabominable, but I hope that the rest of you watching enjoy my new line as much as I do. I think it still has some of that strangeness that they wanted to get with Kerbominable originally, but this is, in my opinion, leagues more exciting. Moving on from the desert, our next Pokemon design takes us back into the Maza jungle. Here we meet a Pokemon who's equal parts ancient and modern, and one that has been requested time and time again by fans. Many of you watching this, especially those of you in Mexico, are probably familiar with the iconic Mexican jumping beam. What you may not know is that these legendary legumes are neither beans, nor do they jump. In fact, they are seed pods of a type of shrub, inhabited by a type of grub, the larva of a small moth species. The developing larva uses the tough seed pods as a source of protection against the elements and predators, and they jump in order to move their place of residence out of the scorching sun so as not to be cooked alive inside. An arguably cute idea for a Pokemon, but I decided to take the concept one step further tying in another idea that people have been requesting to make a Pokemon based on. And here we are, Cafe Garacha, a bug-type Pokemon that uses the shell of a coffee bean as both protection and a source of nutrients. Of course, as you shouldn't give a child caffeine, perhaps a diet consisting of nothing but is a questionable one. Cafe Caracha would fill up one of the much-needed electric-type slots that we have open in the Maza region, exploring an alternative to the usual and much more literal interpretation of the typing. Rather than actually generating electricity, Café Caracha is more of a conceptual representation of energy, bursting at the seams with caffeinated impulses. Some of you may argue that this is a cop-out, but I legitimately love the idea of an electric type that isn't just lightning mouse or lightning bird. Well, even though I do have both of those in the Maza region as well. <laughs> Café Caracha, the jumping bean Pokémon. To protect their developing bodies, Café Caracha spend their lives inside a hollowed-out bean. They use these beans not only as protection, but as a source of sustenance to help them grow. These particular beans are packed with caffeine, meaning that Café Caracha are almost always hyperactive. They bounce back and forth inside their shells, ricocheting off of surfaces like a tiny bullet. Now, I might not be a coffee drinker, but I do love a cup of hot tea. And if you're like me, looking to try some new, authentic, and delicious teas, you'll love today's sponsor, Boxu. If you haven't already heard, Boxu is a monthly subscription service that delivers premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings straight from Japan to your door. Ever tried handmade yuzu sake candy? Well, you should. It's really good. <laughs> The first boxu you will receive is called Seasons of Japan. It's carefully curated by their snack experts to bring you a taste of Japan's four seasons, and a taste of what a year of boxu will be like. After your first box, you will receive a new themed box each month, each one providing a gourmet journey through Japan. We got to try these Seasons of Japan box out for ourselves, and traveled through winter, spring, summer, and fall with a collection of snacks and goodies. My personal favorite from this box was the Don Don Yaki. Honestly, it was the packaging that got me to try this one out. These little guys beating their taiko drums are so cute. 
I popped over to the Boxu culture guide included with each box to make sure that they were vegetarian, and I'm very glad they were because, <laughs> wow, are these things good. There's really no American snack I can compare them to. They're savory, salty, but with a bit of a tang that comes from the tonkatsu sauce that they're marinated in. My description probably isn't doing them justice. You'll just have to try them out for yourself. That's just one of the many snacks included with every monthly boxu package. And if you're feeling thirsty after your munching, why not indulge yourself in an authentic green tea? It's the closest I'll get to enjoying a view of Mount Fuji from a hot bath on a balcony while still being in my apartment in Providence. If you want to try some of these amazing snacks out for yourself, be sure to click that link in the description of this video and use the code subjectively to get 15 bucks off your first order. Thank you so much to Boxu for sponsoring this video, and thank you guys for listening to our pitch. Now, back to the Pokemon. Look, I don't drink coffee. I feel like there are two kinds of people in the world. People who pretend they like the way coffee makes them feel, and people who have accepted the fact that they are constantly ingesting a stimulant drug in order to stay awake all day. The latter will probably like this next Pokemon. Flitjitter is sort of a visual representation of how I feel after a single sip of any caffeinated beverage. Frayed, jittery, and ready to fly headfirst into a wall just before succumbing to cardiac arrest. Again, I was interpreting electric types in a somewhat abstract way here, using caffeine-induced energy as a way to connect this design visually to other electric Pokémon. As it turns out, the jagged, uneven lines that make up this silhouette do read as electric type to me. The wings unintentionally became two Pikachu tails, but I kept it as sort of a resentful jab at the limitations of designing Pokémon based off of older design conventions. Did I think that I was going to design an over-caffeinated bug this week? Can't say I did, but here we are, and I actually really like it. Flitjitter, the Wired Pokémon After they evolve from Café Karacha and break free from their shells, Flitjitter are so packed with reckless energy that it is literally impossible for them to stay still. They zip back and forth, so disoriented by their own sporadic movement that it's very hard for them to get from one place to another. Their excess energy is released in bursts of electricity, not strong enough to harm a human, but enough to provide a small dose of adrenaline. We've reached the final Pokémon of this video, and like the crab car and coffee bean bug, this is a bit of a weird one. Winding back the clock almost two years back, that can't be right. This final design is the long-awaited split evolution of the Ziazaya line, my actual favorite set of designs from this project. Well, all except one. I didn't want to make any changes to this line, and instead was just going to scrap the middle form, Zusk, altogether. Instead, though, I gave it one shot at redesigning, and though I won't show the full process here, I gotta say I'm so much more happy with this design, and I'm glad I didn't have to throw the whole thing in the trash. Zusk can evolve into one of two Pokémon, Mazemen, my favorite Maza Pokémon, or Blazia. From the very day I released these mods, people asked me to make a popcorn split evolution for them. I loved the idea, and it wasn't until just a few days ago that the visuals for the concept sprung into my head. The Zia Zia line all have several Pokémon making up the entirety of their design, like Magneton or Dugtrio. Mazemen work together in harmony, but what if when Zusk evolved, they didn't all get along? That was the concept behind Blazia, a sort of unnatural progression that was a lot more morbid than the rest of the line. I'm not sure why I made the popcorn evolution so nasty looking. I, I love popcorn. The idea, though, of the second stage being roasted in some capacity made me feel like the frustration of that transition should be illustrated in the design of the evolution. I went back and forth on the typing. I know people want it to be fire grass just for the sake of unique typing, but we do already have Mozzie and Maractus, who is also fire grass. I thought about making it ground fire to reference the traditional way that popcorn is made in Central America, using sand, but finally the balancing team of the fan game convinced me that it should be dark fire, which I like too. Visually, it certainly reads as a dark type, and we need more in the region anyway. Blazia, the Burnt Kernel Pokémon A dysfunctional colony of Zusk will evolve into Blazia, a newly discovered Pokémon in the Maza region. In the wild, it is uncommon to see this transformation. It is most often a trainer who causes the shift from such cooperative Pokémon into the foul-tempered hothead that is Blazia. The multiple heads of Blazia are constantly disagreeing with one another, often bursting out into fiery arguments that make it quite difficult for the Pokémon to carry out even a simple task. They are, however, quite powerful in battle, 
able to smother their opponents in thick smoke and scorching embers. Real talk, I'm so happy with all of these. I really feel like I'm hitting my stride with Pokemon designs, and what I'm learning here is having a really good impact on my other artwork as well. The Maza region may be ending soon, but I do have some fun ideas to keep the Pokemon content coming after we're done. And speaking of which, in case you guys didn't know already, we have a group of dedicated fans working their butts off on a fan-made game of the Maza region. I'm barely involved. When I say they're working their butts off, I mean they're doing everything. It's incredible. It makes me so happy, and I encourage anyone who wants to lend a hand to go check out the Discord to see what they're working on. Thanks for watching, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out Boxu. Remember, use the code subjectively to get $15 off your first order. Peace and love, and I'll see you all in the next video.